Hello everyone, welcome to session 10 of LTEC 623. This week, I want to begin by taking a look at the mid-semester course evaluation results. Now, at the time that I created this video, 18 of you had responded to this anonymous course evaluation. And if you can refresh your memory, most of the questions were Likert scale, from strongly disagree to strongly agree. The first statement that you were asked to agree or disagree with was the weekly videos are clear and contribute to my understanding of the course content. 14 of you or almost 78% strongly agreed and the rest agreed with that statement. The next statement said the course readings help me understand the course content. Here we see a little bit of a split. Strongly agree, 11 of you, six of you agreed in the green, and one person was neutral on that particular item. Similar results with the third statement, which said the course assignments contribute to my understanding of the course content. So we can see 11 people strongly agreed, six agreed, and one was neutral. Now, in terms of the statement, the pace of the class is just right, we see a little bit of a mix. We have eight people strongly agreeing, six people agreeing, and four kind of neutral in terms of the pacing of the class. The next statement stated, I find the class very difficult. And here we see a bit of a spread. The largest category was neutral. The next largest category was disagree. And then we even had a few folks in the strongly disagree, and one person f feels the course is difficult. The next statement said, I would recommend this class to someone else. And we can see here that 83% strongly agreed. That's always a good sign as an instructor. Two people agreed and one person was neutral. And then finally, this was kind of interesting. I wanted to know whether or not you plan to use the We Video program for editing in the second half of the semester. And you can see here that it was actually, we have a three-way tie, which means six of you said, yes, definitely you're going to use We Video. Six of you said, definitely no, you have other software you prefer to use. And then six of you are not sure, uh, which is interesting. Now, in terms of the open-ended items, the evaluation asked what helps you learn in this course. Folks pointed out the weekly videos, the readings and the assignments, peer work and peer feedback, links to tutorials and extra content. Several people stated it was useful to see real-world examples of videos. Several people mentioned they like the experimentation of this class and the hands-on nature as well as instructor availability and clear instructions and course structure were all things that helped you learn so far in this class. Now, the next item asked what might make learning difficult in this course. And the number one thing across the board was time management, folks feeling with everything else going on in their lives and all of their other courses, that time is the most limiting factor. A couple of people pointed out issues with Wii Video in terms of its glitches or just the learning curve of learning to use this type of software. Some people mentioned a lack of technical expertise and or a lack of equipment. One person said they needed help with finding ideas and topics and really needed inspiration. Another person pointed out that what makes learning difficult in this class is not having a TA to ask for help. And of course, I would say to that, you can always reach out to me and I'll do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And then one person, I, this is quite interesting actually, pointed out that what makes learning difficult in this course is the experiential nature of the class. And so here's a quote, it made me laugh because I totally get it. But this person wrote, I don't know who this is, it's anonymous. We learn by doing in this class, and production one was no exception for me. What could go wrong, did. Lost files, unfamiliarity with editing tools, poor audio, poor location, and poor setting, etc. <laughs> uh, so I chuckle a little bit at that because I recognize the difficulties. I'm sure we can all relate to one way or the other, but I want to compliment you on sticking with it and recognizing that this is part of the learning process is this hands-on experience. And then finally, the last part of the evaluation asked for recommendations for changes that you might make. So one idea that got thrown out was the idea of synchronous group discussions where we could come together and talk about things. 
Another suggestion was to include more optional technical readings. Another suggestion that several people made, and I think this is a great idea, is at the beginning of the course is to provide a recommended materials list early in the semester. That way folks can beg, borrow, and steal and ask and collect the things that they think they'll need in order to shoot the video. So that's a really a great suggestion. Another suggestion was to provide more real-world examples and or non-examples. One person suggested reducing the number of programs that we're using, meaning software. And admittedly, this class does rely on quite a few pieces of software from Loom, Audacity, WeVideo, and GoReact. Another person wanted more readings for a do-it-yourself audience, as opposed to readings that are more oriented for professional videographers or filmmakers. That's a pretty good suggestion, but I will be honest, those readings are harder to find, especially good ones that are going to give you real advice on how to shoot and do things. But I will do my best to look for more readings in the do-it-yourself category. And then finally, someone pointed out it would be helpful if I, as the instructor, would keep up with grading. And I certainly agree with that, and I will do better in the second half of the semester. So thanks, everyone, for filling out the mid-semester course evaluation. It's always helpful to have this check-in and to give me some ideas about what can be improved as we move through the second half of the semester, and then also what I can do to improve the course in general the next time it comes around. So with that, I want to shift to looking at the calendar. And of course, we're coming off of spring break. And so we've kind of jumped over a week here. And as you can imagine, in week 10, we are entering week one of our four-week production cycle. And so we're going to be focusing on pre-production this semester. And then that will kick off week two, week three, and week four, where we're going to be going through the entire production process again, which will take us all the way to week 13 of the semester. As I mentioned before spring break, our second video production project is going to be focused on the talking head category. So let's talk a little bit about the parameters of this particular assignment. The goal of this production project is, again, for you to produce an original high-quality educational video, but this time it's going to be in the talking head style. The purpose is to allow you to practice the technical aspects of capturing high-quality audio and video, as well as practicing being on camera and presenting information in a concise, compelling manner. And then also the purpose of this project is to practice our video editing skills, which is something that takes a lot of time, effort, and practice. So we'll get a bit, little bit more experience using our video editors. In terms of length, I really want to emphasize keeping your videos relatively short, less than six minutes. Some of you really learned the hard way with Video Production 1 that the longer the video, the more you have to deal with. So really keep that in mind in terms of length. And then in terms of the topic, anything goes. Uh, it's really up to you. The idea here is for you to be the authority on something. So to give you some inspiration, we will be taking a look at some different talking head videos that I think will be useful for you. Now, the first example that I want to show you is actually called Attending a One-Room School. And this was actually produced by me in 2018. It's very short, just under three minutes. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this was not shot in high definition. I'll just point out that up front, but let's go ahead and watch this video. Ira Center School was located in Ira, Vermont, a small town in the center of the state, about 16 miles southwest of Rutland City. I attended Ira Center School for four years from 1st, 2nd, 3rd through 4th grades. That was 1982 to 1986. The school had one teacher and 16 students in it. I was one of three kids in my class. I remember we all thought the second grade was a big class because it had seven students in it. Inside the school, we all sat at little wooden desks lined up in rows facing a big multi-panel chalkboard. We had assigned seats and were lined up by grade. 
first graders to the left, and then the second and third graders, and finally the fourth graders, all the way to the right, closest to the windows. Towards the back of the room, there was also a small conference table located behind an upright piano. This is where we practice reading out loud and other things that needed to be done individually or in small groups with the teacher. On most days, Mrs. Bernhardt would teach each grade one at a time throughout the morning. I can't remember if she started with older kids or the younger ones, but she would go grade by grade teaching a lesson or two to that specific grade. When she wasn't working with us, we all had independent work to do by ourselves at our desk. This kept us busy while she taught the other grades. Outside the school, there were two swing sets, a jungle gym, and a slide. There was also a basketball rim, which wasn't used much because there was no court, just grass, which made it hard to dribble the ball. Looking back, I'm glad I went to a one-room school. It was a great experience, and I got a lot of attention as an individual student. Unfortunately, Ira Center School closed in 1991. Since then, the town of Ira pays for its students to attend bigger schools in neighboring towns. Okay, so there you have it. That's one example of a talking head video. Now, one of the things you probably noticed by watching that video is the amount of time that I'm actually on camera as a talking head is relatively short. There's lots of other supplemental information that I was able to include. And so that's something you should be keeping in mind as you're planning your talking head video. Now, when I watch this video, there's a number of things that come to mind that I want to point out to you that I think will be helpful when you think about creating your video. So the first thing is this idea of shooting video with editing in mind. And that's really making sure that we're getting the shots and the quality of shots that we want because video editing takes so much time. And so the timeline ultimately, and this is the timeline I use to create this video, becomes the main workspace. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's where I put together my vision for this entire video came together. And it came together using four tracks. I had two for video and two for audio. One of my tracks was voiceover. The next track was the music track for some background music. And if you look at this fairly closely, you can see there's quite a bit happening in terms of fading in and fading out and, and what's louder and what's being emphasized in the audio channel of my video production. Another track was dedicated, of course, to the video and all of the still photos that I integrated into the production. And then the fourth track was reserved for text overlays and inserts that I wanted to include throughout the production. So as you're planning your video production project too, I want you to be thinking about editing. Keep editing in mind to help you come up with a manageable project. Now, of course, I also, while I was working on this, included another track for the rule of thirds. And you can see it here quite clearly. I was able to position my video so that my head was actually right at the intersection of one of the thirds. Now, if I could shoot this over, I would make sure that I was actually a little bit higher. So I probably would have put my chin or my mouth right at that intersection rather than my nose. Because I think and we'll learn a little bit more about this in session 11, is that my head is a little too far away from the top of the frame, which is something I'd like to fix if I did this over. Now, some other errors I notice when looking at this is if you, it's very quick, but if you slow this down and look at it carefully, there's a moment where I get caught looking at the camera. So rather than looking off to the side, which was a stylistic choice that I made to have myself looking away from the camera as opposed to directly at the camera, you can see at one point I actually look off to the side and I glance at the camera itself. So I wish I didn't do that. Another thing is 
I didn't fill the canvas with some of my still photos. And so you can see here, here's the picture of the school. And on the right hand side, colored in red here, you can see some of the photograph is 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 unwanted. It's it's not providing any information. And in hindsight, I should have gone back and edited that out. I could have zoomed in on this photo, cropped that out, and no one would have ever have known. Um, so that was definitely a mistake in retrospect. Another thing was some unwanted tint. I should have spent more time color correcting my stills and my footage. Now, we video is not particularly good at that, but you can see here with this still photo, because it's fairly old, I don't know why when it was imported, it has this kind of magenta tint to it, which doesn't match the rest of my footage. And so it feels a little bit out of place. Another thing, and this really gets me, is I didn't do a good enough job paying attention to the safe areas. So as you can see here, I had picture in picture, and I really wanted that still photo to be in the corner, kind of like a newscaster presenting. But one of the things you probably noticed is that it's too tight to the edges. And if I overlay the safe areas, especially the red line, which is not the action line, but the title safe area, you could see I need to move my still photos to the left and down, which probably means I would need to resize that. So that was a bit of a mistake. One area that I did do well with was making sure the title of the screen adheres to those safe areas. So that's a little bit of reflection on my part related to a talking head video that I've produced. Now, I want to show you a couple of more examples, and I'm just going to show a few seconds of each of these to point out a couple of things that I think are done really, really well. Now, this first one is called Student Conduct in the Library what to know when visiting, and this was shot by Brian Bays, a former LTEC student, in 2018. Hello, and welcome to the library. My name's Brian, I'm one of the librarians here. Today I'd like to talk to you about three things, food and drink, noise, and theft when visiting the library. Let's get started. Now, that's just a short clip of Brian's video, but what I like about it is his very calm and easygoing delivery. And believe it or not, that is not easy to do, but he really does it and creates this calm, inviting feeling with his voice. And I think he does that really well. And of course, the other thing that he does really well is the use of the pedagogical prompts of listing the items that he's going to talk about with the text overlays. And so he's kind of giving the viewer a sneak preview of what's to come in the rest of the video. And we know instructionally that that's really good design. Now, here's another snippet from a video called A Quick Intro to Distance Learning. And this is created by Sonny Cabello in 2018. So let's watch just a few seconds of Sonny's video. Have you ever thought about earning your degree, but didn't have time during the day to take a class? Well, distance learning may be an option for you. Aloha, I'm Sunny Cabello with the University Center, and I'm here to give you a brief introduction to distance learning. One of the things I really like about Sunny's video is A, she has excellent lighting. It's very natural, and coupled with this close-up shot of her face, it makes the video very inviting in the sense that we want to learn more about what she has to say about this particular topic. And so she did an excellent job of really framing herself in the camera and using quality natural light to eliminate any shadows on her face or in the background. The last one that I want to show you is called Martini A to Z by Casey Bales. Let's go ahead and watch a few moments of this particular talking head video. Bartender, hey, uh, could I get one martini, please? Thanks. Sure. Um, did you want that as a dry, dirty, or perfect martini? Hey guys, so today I'll be telling you about the martini cocktail. For starters, there are three main types. 
the dry martini, which uses gin and dry vermouth. A dirty martini, which uses the same two ingredients, but also it requires olive brine or olive juice. And finally, a perfect martini is gin with equal amount sweet and dry vermouth. Of course, what's great about Casey's video is his creative storytelling. He was able to conceive in his mind and then actually operationalize this video where he's actually playing multiple roles. And you can tell from the introduction music and the pacing of the video that aesthetically, he's really creating a mood to his video that's quite fitting, of course, for the topic and is a real strong stylistic choice. And so that's something that I think Casey does really well with his Talking Head video. Now, as you enter into storyboarding for Video Production Project 2, I wanna emphasize keeping in mind all of the dimensions of video, from production style, value, and visual aesthetics, to our pedagogical considerations that we have to keep in mind. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for this week. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.